Well, questions and concerns about President Biden's age and stamina continue to mount. And now Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley, well, she's suggesting that she and the rest of the GOP field may not be running against President Biden so much as they are running against Vice President Harris. Let's be very clear. If they think it's going to be President Biden, a vote for President Biden is actually a vote for President Harris. We are running against Kamala Harris. Make no bones about it. The New York Times knows it. Every liberal knows it. They know that it's Kamala Harris that's going to end up being president of the United States if Joe Biden wins this election. During yesterday's White House briefing, our own Jackie Heinrich pressed White House Press Secretary Kareem Jean-Pierre about Haley's comments. But no surprise, she got this non-answer from the president's spokesperson. She also said that a vote for uh, President Biden is a vote for Vice President Kamala Harris. W what do you say to anyone who is questioning whether the president would survive a full four-year term? So let me just say this. Uh, it, I'm not going to comment on the 2024. She is a candidate, so I want to be very careful here. Uh, and uh, we do follow the Hatch Act, so I want to be really, really mindful here. Um, look. This is a president, if you look at his track record, if you, and I'm saying this more broadly, if you look at what he's been able to do, uh, he has been able to push forward and get done historic pieces of legislation. Uh, he has gotten more done than any other president. Douglas, asking about the president's survival and health has nothing to do with the Hatch Act, which is about barring advocating for a candidate from the White House podium. By answering the way she did, that left so much room for speculation. I'm, I'm sorry, but that was a, a, a failure response. Uh, yeah. You never allow speculation about the president's health. You say, look at the physician notes, look at his right. last physical. I mean, why'd she do that? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I, the only explanation I can ever come up with is the Democrats think that, for them, Joe Biden is a stripling of a candidate. You know, we just saw Dianne Feinstein wheeled into Congress, uh, wheeled into the Senate at the age of 89. So perhaps the Democrats think, you know, 80-year-old, there's no reason why he can't run again. You know, his best <laughs> years are in front of him and much more. Um, I wonder, you know, this is a party that has been locked into a generational grip by the people who are effectively now all in their 80s. Now, there's no reason why, you know, people in their 80s can do an awful lot of things, but why has this generation got such a grip on the party? Why can they not pass the ball down a generation, it seems? And I think the answer is that if you go a generation down from Biden and Feinstein and Pelosi and co., you get the very radical younger generation. Yep. We just heard from one of the next generation ones, Newsom. You go down from there and it's more radical still. So arguably this generation has the party in its grips because they know beneath them it's how. Yeah, I mean, look, this <laughs> fair point. Uh, Jerry, also fair to ask, like, Biden, you're asking us to be the oldest president in history. Exactly. So we can ask about your VP who has a 37% approval rating in Monmouth. Mm -hmm. She is just one banana peel away <laughs> from being the president and the leader of the free world. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is a scary thing. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, you talk about this next generation being really radical, Doug. I would say that, you know, look, it's not just that they're radical, it's that their ideas in no way match up with what people want to exactly. do in this country. They are so far afield from what people want. But her ratings are in the toilet. Mm. Yes. There is no way this can go forward. Yeah. yeah, I was reading a piece by USA Today, though, about Kamala. Emily, this line stood out to me. This is supposed to be a news piece. For more than two years, Republicans have been trying to paint Harris as incompetent. So it's all Republicans. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Harris herself. Right, let's, let's edit that to be truthful, which is that Republicans have been singing from the heavens how she is incompetent and has been demonstrating her incompetence and lack of leadership. What was interesting about that piece was that it was making the point that the Democrats are scrambling essentially to find a narrative for her. Yes, they have blamed the criticism by Republicans on her race and gender um, nonsensically, but they went on to say that apparently immediately after President Biden declared his candidacy for, president, for uh, the presidency, that there was a meeting and it was all about strategy of her. And Democratic strategists were saying, well, what we should do is let's get her in front of events where she's more comfortable, where she can be herself. They also said, let's get her in front of voters that we know love her. That will be successful. Like four. Right. Right. Yeah. Contrast like that, however, with the fact that you pointed out the polling and the disastrous polling, swing voters absolutely loathe her. 
mean, she mm. peaked at what, 35% approval? Mm -hmm. So it's not the voters who like her that they have to remind right. them of. What they should do is tell those swing voters, or anyone, heck, I'll, I'll listen, why <laughs> she's doing a good job mm -hmm. or what she has accomplished, right. if anything. We are all waiting, not with our breaths held because I fear that we will all die, but the bottom line is they're scrambling to shift that narrative to make anything stick, but it'll probably fail. And they're trying to elevate her to your point, Cassie. She's apparently going to be in the cabinet meeting today with the president. She led an AI meeting recently. Ooh. So they're saying, they're, they're like kind of buttressing her up. I mean, she couldn't get herself out of Iowa all by herself. Kamala Harris has been failure to launch since minute one, and they've been trying to make her the second coming of their party, and it's just not happening. And they are concerned. They keep ignoring the polls on themselves. But then also, just yesterday, Washington Post releases that Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he's people, 20% of voters said they're there for him and 44 percent said we'd be open to voting for him they've got a real problem and i just think it's because he's the apparent alternative they're like democrats are like we'll take anything at this point i take your point douglas that they are afraid of the radical below them mm -hmm. but i think they are just afraid to lose their grip most people in their 80s are having a very full retirement right now go enjoy go retire yes. yeah. <laughs> there's totally. nothing that says you don't have a lot of years ahead of you you just don't need to be running yeah, the free world and that's what we're afraid of apparently the white house strategy is just to ignore robert f kennedy jr i mean good luck mm -hmm. that guy's rising in the polls so yeah. best of luck Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.